Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your team and shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. This is a selection from Emma Lather Lazarus's uh, poem, The New Col Colossus. Um, this is on the inscription on the base of the Statue of Liberty, and it's a great um, quote to introduce our, our um, urbanization and immigration uh, discussion. Um, and so the United States, uh, speaking of immigration, the United States has always been, um, you know, ever since, uh, you know, the Europeans started coming over here, always been a nation of immigrants. Um, and during the latter half of the... Uh, the, um, the the 19th century, we we see this population boom in the United States, where the population uh, you know almost uh, increases more than threefold, um, and a significant portion of this uh, this population growth was fueled by the arrival um, of about 16 million immigrants, um, and we'll see an, uh, another nine million immigrants arrive uh, during the first part of the uh, the 20th century, um, and so what. What's causing this growth of immigration? Um, every time you see uh, immigration come up, uh, there's always going to be uh, some push-pull factors. There's going to be some things that are that are that are negative that are leading people to to flee their home country, and then there's some pull factors that are drawing people in. Um, in the 19th century, some of the negative forces that are driving Europeans out. Uh, the poverty of displaced farm workers uh, that are being driven from the land due to the mechanization of the farm work. Uh, number two, the overcrowding and joblessness in European cities as a result of a population boom that Europe was experiencing. Um, number three, religious persecution. Uh, you know, for example, the Jews in, uh, in Russia were facing things uh, known as pogroms, which are, you know, essentially, you know, these violent mobs that are attacking uh, people of the Jewish faith. faith. And so um, these are all these, like, push factors that um, Europeans are experiencing in the latter part of the 19th century. So, so what are the positive reasons? What are the, what are the pull factors? Uh, what are, what's drawing people into or to the United States in uh, the latter, latter part of the 19th century? Number one, uh, we have a reputation for political and religious freedom. Uh, we have a reputation for economic opportunities. Um, you know, especially now that we see at the same time the settling of the Great Plains, uh, the rise of, uh, of industry in America, um, this land of opportunity, namely economic opportunity, um, is really going to uh, draw people to our shores. Um, and then technology does play a role. Uh, we see an introduction of large steamships, and this makes the, uh, the one-way passage across the Atlantic Ocean relatively cheap. Uh, so I have here, um, you know, old immigrants versus new immigrants. Um, and if you remember from the earlier part of the 19th century, uh, we talked about this first wave of immigrants. And, you know, throughout the 1880s, or through the 1880s, I should say, the overwhelming majority, majority of immigrants came from northern and western Europe. These are, you know, the British Isles, Germany, and Scandinavia. Uh, these old immigrants mostly are Protestant. Uh, they oh, it's, you know, we do, a sizable minority is, uh, you know, Roman Catholic, you know, with a German and Irish. Uh, their language is mostly English-speaking. Uh, they have a high level of literacy. They have occupational skills. That makes it relatively easy for them to assimilate into uh, to American society. Uh, these new immigrants, however, begin in the 1890s. Um, there's a notable change. Uh, first of all, new immigrants are coming from southeastern Europe. Uh, these are the Italians, the Greeks, the Slovaks, the Poles, the Russians. Um, a lot of these immigrants are poor and illiterate. A lot of these immigrants are coming from autocratic countries. They're not accustomed to our democratic uh, traditions. Um, a lot of these immigrants are Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, and Jewish. And so you see, um, you know, our country really become a, a, a true melting pot um, as, we, uh, as we see the end of the 19th century draw to a close. And you see, well, I guess we could call it a melting pot, um, maybe more of like cultural pluralism as well, because um, 
Multiply gives the idea that everything's being blended together and with the new immigrants that's not necessarily the case. You see a lot of these immigrants when they come into the cities, uh, they, they cling to, to, to groups that are familiar to them and to customs that are familiar to them because they have a hard time assimilating to American society. Uh, and so you see in these large cities uh, the development of ethnic ghetto, ghettos where you know, you'll see a, a Jewish neighborhood, an Italian neighborhood and, and so forth. Um, and, and because these new immigrants are so different, um, because they have you know a more difficult time assimilating to society, you do see America and uh, the American government uh, taking some uh, actions to restrict immigration. Um, you know some examples here: uh, 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act places a ban on all new immigrants from China. Um, we have uh, restrictions on the immigration of undesirable people. Uh, these are people convicted of criminal acts, people that are diagnosed as mentally incompetent, which, you know, after Ellis Island opens in 1892, uh, these new arrivals have to pass a more rigorous medical and document examination, um, and they have to pay an entry fee to get into the United States, uh, making it much, much tougher uh, to, uh, to uh, gain entryway into our, into our uh, country. Um, you see a law passed in 1885 that prohibited contract labor. Uh, this is in order to protect American workers. Um, you see labor unions, surprisingly enough, uh, well, I shouldn't say surprisingly enough, but labor unions, um, you know, they are anti-immigration because they feel like these immigrants are, are driving wages down. These immigrants are the ones that the bosses are going to hire as strike breakers or scabs. And especially when we get into the 1890s and the Depression hits, of 1893, this is going to be uh, even blown up uh, even more um, than it was in the 1880s. Um, and so while we see the Statue of Liberty uh, being uh, uh, built in the 1880s, uh, you know, as we see that, uh, that poem by Emma Lazarus uh, placed uh, on, the, uh, on the base, um, it's, a, it's a mixed bag here. Uh, while we're, uh, uh, where we see this, uh, this, uh, this uh, you know, um, growth of immigrants coming to our country, we definitely see a, uh, a negative response uh, from, from the more nativist, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, uh, you know, culture um, that comes in the form of, of, of action uh, in, uh, in legislation and, uh, you know, socially as well, because there's definitely some uh, nativist groups that are, that are forming again in the 1890s, uh, much like we saw in the 1850s with the Know Nothing Party. Um, this is going to continue until the 1920s, uh, when the uh, when the these uh, Congress passes some laws called the Quota Acts, uh, and these Quota Acts are going to almost uh, entirely restrict uh, immigration from Southern and Eastern Europe. Um, stay tuned for some uh, for the next lectures on uh, urbanization and uh, reform.